Hi, Andrea Strang here at Gallery 222. We just opened this gorgeous new show. It is, this room is Philip Carroll's work. Here is Philip Carroll. He's a Pafa grad and uh, a fine art painter extraordinaire. I mean, this room is so powerful. Between the vibrant colors, your compositions, the form, the pattern. Um, uh, can, can we get into your use of color? Absolutely. Which one do you want to talk about? This one with the tomato here? Or that would be great, yeah. Because you were asking about saturation of color yes. and the chroma that's in there. The one thing, and it's what you see going all through the show, when it's about fruit or things of that nature, there's a luminosity that you have to achieve, or for me it just doesn't work. So it does start with a lot of glazes and then opaques on top and kind of back and forth. Um, it's also picking the right cloth that you want to get, you know, mm -hmm. that's going to match what happens with it. You know, I mean, and there, I try not to do the same cloth every time. It doesn't always work that way. Right. But, and then in this series, this is also part of my blue bowl series, which I've been doing for years, uh. which is actually a bonsai bowl, but I use that to put all my different fruits and vegetables in. And these tomatoes were actually from the garden in the backyard last year. Wow. So. And I love how the branches of the tomatoes kind of mimic the pattern in, yes. in the cloth. Was yes. that on purpose? Yeah. Or? Well, they, they had a pattern to them and they were all hooked together. But yes, I take it and exaggerate and I want things to flow like that. So I think the cloth kind of reacted to what was already happening with those vines so that it worked, they worked, in, you know, together. Yeah, no, I love it. And then more about the color, I mean, do you set out like your background color? Is that last, first, during? Like these are all just beautiful, like a, that's a beautiful teal. Most of the time there's a tone that's over the entire canvas. It can be anything from an orange to a yellow to a blue. Um, this one started kind of a lightish, bluish value underneath, not what you see there. But I'll paint the objects in front first, because the way I look at it is if I mess them up, there's no point in having a background, so I don't want to continue. And then I'll begin to paint around it and work back and forth, fixing it as I go. Oh my goodness, I love it. Now, I noticed you have cloth here, but then you have a wooden pedestal there. Yes. Um, any, any thought process there? Any? Um... That's a table that belonged to my wife's uncle, mm -hmm. and she was going to throw it away one day, and I told her she couldn't, yeah. and it's become kind of a staple to almost a lot of the still lifes that I do. Even underneath the cloths, I'll put that table underneath so that I know it's there. So I've used it over and over again. So wow. it's kind of a starting point for yes, me. Yes, I love it. Well, I just, this room um, is small in nature and I was nervous with the amount of pieces. Yes. But it fits beautifully and, and like I said, it, this is a powerful room between um, you know all these and they're they're just little masterpieces mm -hmm. um, I love the two pairs uh, on that stone like you yes uh, you, you can you can do fabric so well you can do stone so well and then uh, one of the crowd pleasers is the rugs yes oh my goodness we've had more people come and ask about your handling of, of painting a rug. Yes, and it's, it, the rugs are, actually, after I get everything else done in the painting, the rugs look really tedious, mm -hmm. but for me, it's more like kind of a zen moment where I get to just go into my, my place and I can just stipple everything in. But they begin just a very basic color, mm -hmm. and then especially in this one that's in the center, or even the ones that are over here at the little birds, I put in all the black lines first, so I don't lose the pattern. And then I'll go in very darkly with the basic color of what it is and then work my way back. Mm. And there's usually about three to four different layers with the stippling that goes on with them. Wow. I mean, you can just, the, the justice position of the, the bowl that's like smooth and the bird that's feathery and then the rug that's just, you just feel like you can put your fingers through. Yes. It's just, it's so, so well done. 
Uh, another one of my favorites is um, the uh, bird with, uh, again, you don't notice the little <laughs> ladybugs until yes. you're up close because your bird is, has such presence. And then you see these little delightful ladybugs. Yes. Was that uh, uh, an afterthought or did you know right from the start? Uh, it, for, I was going to have one flying above its head so that it kind of looked like it was looking. And I just couldn't get it to work right. Mm -hmm. And it, it disturbed me. It just took away from what was going on with the bird and the branch. So I just kind of started putting the little ladybugs around and put it on the grass and had a little bit of fun with it. So it was more of a piece of, of humor. Yes. But that's a bird that I've used in, in a lot of paintings, like the one that's back here. Yeah. He's up here, he's there. And I used it in a one last year that was in a show. So the, that bird sitting on top of a pumpkin. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So I've used it over and over again. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, um, you can come visit us Wednesday through Saturday, 11 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Shop anytime at gallery222malvern.com. But I'm telling you, make a trip in for this show to see this room. Uh, you will not be disappointed.